I think the biggest breakthrough that we are looking into in the next few years are going to be, first of all, 5G integration, where we are talking about fully connected and intelligent industrial IoT as well, but with the help of this low latency, high speed and broader coverage, it's going to create fully wireless smart factories. Welcome to Afnet Silica's We Talk IoT. We'll chat with innovators, experts and business owners to learn how they are implementing IoT and using data to create new business opportunities. I am your host, Stephanie Ruth Hader. Today, I'm thrilled to have Divya Vakanka, the Vice President of Enterprise Business from BIX, joining me to explore the fascinating landscape of IoT. And we have a lot to talk about. We are delving into the global digital transformation, the future of IoT platforms, the unique role of AI in the IoT value chain, and the game-changing technology of eSIMS. Welcome, Divya. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Ruth. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your work at Bix. Definitely. So I'm leading the enterprise business at Bix and my current role involves enablement of sales with product go-to-market strategy, with partnerships and with the cloud communications business operations, which is a global strategy, being global but having local coverage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, I manage the transversal marketing for the organization, for the telecom and the enterprise segments. Prior to this, I have done product management for uh, the cloud communications portfolio at Bix, where I built innovative products from the very scratch, and it is contributing uh, multi-million dollars uh, in the Bix top line today. Fascinating. What, in your opinion, are the main challenges businesses face at the moment in the current global or global <laughs> digital transformation era? A very good question. So enterprises are grappling with several macro challenges today. In the wake of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, the economic recession, there is an elevated inflation, high interest rates, and the prevailing geopolitical situation. Mm. So the impact that they are having are multifold. It is ranging from managing the customer expectations to what they can invest into the innovative products and solutions, what are the technology and business models they should adopt, and compliancy with the regulations, data security, and simultaneously they have to manage operational and capital expenditure efficiently, right? So the challenges are really multifold. So if you look into the challenges, we can say there are a couple of, you know, main challenges mm -hmm. like customer expectations. There is an increase in customer expectations since pandemic, right? So customers expect digital experience and businesses are kind of pressed to keep up with that. They need to keep on enhancing and improving the customer experience going forward. Mm -hmm. In addition, there is disruption in the business model mm -hmm. with the digital transformation adoption. The old revenue streams are kind of becoming obsolete and there are new business models that have come into play. And there, customers have a very high expectation of freemium business model, which they anticipate that it should be part of the offering from the businesses. Mm -hmm. Then when we look at another aspect, which is about the regulation compliance, You know, technology always surpasses the regulations and policies, right? But then the businesses have the challenges to keep up and to navigate the gray areas and policies. Yeah, we see that with AI at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. And then there comes the challenge of privacy and security mm. because you have a lot of data coming in with the digitalization. You have to make sure how you are gathering them, how you are storing them, and how you are going to use those data, right? And then there is an evergreen challenge of integration of your legacy systems. Mm. Because if you have a legacy platforms, then you have to keep on integrating the new technology with the legacy systems to keep serving your customers for business continuity. Yeah. But it's good for the startups because for them, they do not have this gravitational pull of legacy systems, right? 
Mm. So at the end, I would say scalability and business continuity is also kind of a challenge because when you have digital transformation adoption, you have to make sure you are scaling it for the growth, for the demand, but you also have ensured uninterrupted business operations mm. while you are doing the transition. Sure. So there are multiple challenges, but I think it's an ideal moment to explore new opportunities always when there are challenges. Mm. And I can imagine those challenges you just summarized really nicely. Are they more difficult for small and medium enterprises or might it even be easier for them? I I believe it is easier for them in the sense that they can have a look at the business goals, mm -hmm. right? So always start with the business goal as a guiding star when you are looking at the digital transformation framework and strategy, right? And therefore, small and medium businesses, they can incorporate modularity faster and easier compared to big enterprises. Mm. And if you bring modularity, you have the adaptability And you have the agility there, right? So it, it really helps them to navigate the dynamic environment there. Also, they can go faster towards the adoption of cloud technology. And this evolution will help them to reduce their cost structure and increase, you know, the, the flexibility that they can have without extensive IT resources within the company itself. Mm -hmm. And they can leverage the technologies really well, right? So we are talking about technologies like Internet of Things, big data, as you said, artificial intelligence, 5G, which is the newest generation in the GSM, mm -hmm. uh, cloud computing, that's an important one as well. So adoption of these technologies can help them come out with new use cases, solution design, and also help in making sure that they are building new applications for the businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So if we look into what would help them in leveraging these technologies mm -hmm. and reinventing the business models, I think they can create partnership with other ecosystem players. The small and medium businesses can collaborate with digital innovators and partners mm -hmm. to accelerate their journey and to contribute towards others digital transformation process, right? Sure. And let's not forget to invest in our employees, right? Because training our employees on the new skill set that they need for the transformation and to make new business models is, is very important in today's time frame. Yeah, absolutely. Adoption is is always the key when when uh, yeah, moving towards new technologies or towards new areas, mm -hmm. isn't it? But it's always the first thing that is overlooked also. Indeed. You mentioned the opportunities and some use cases. Do you have some examples for use cases that could be an example for new business models that be a great opportunity? I would like to talk about the Internet of Things here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is sure. a technology that has evolved over a period of time, right? Mm -hmm. So I would like to share an anecdote, right? I have been working on Internet of Things in, in my career in 2009, mm -hmm. where it was an automated meter reading system for water management, smart meters that we have built relying on the 2G, 3G <laughs> GSM technology at that time. Mm -hmm. And there were couple of challenges, right, with the limited speed, the restricted capacity and the latency of the technology to carry the data across. But the data actually, I mean, if you know the smart metering systems, the data is carried from the smart meters to the DCU, which is the data concentrator unit. And then from the DCU, it is carried to the centralized server. Mm -hmm. And at the centralized server, you process the data You make sure that there is, uh, you know, you decode it, you monitor it, and then you generate bills for your consumers, right? So, and and these systems were implemented in Vienna, in Austria, and in the uh, state of Tennessee in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, they were live, but there were some challenges that we faced at that time. But now, IoT has come a long way from there, right? So, there are several evolution factors that are helping the technology itself with the help of other evolutions that are happening like cloud, mm. cloudification, uh, cloud computing that comes up. So if I can talk about the main evolutions, it is about the standardization evolution mm -hmm. that has happened. So 
you know, earlier the standards were not there for the interoperability protocols, but now they are standardized by the consortia and the standardized body. It helps the technology to be adopted faster mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when different vendor technologies work together with each other. So that really helps. Another one is the edge computing. I think that's phenomenal for the growth and the adoption of uh, Internet of Things by small and medium enterprises to develop new business cases, right? There, you can make sure that you are treating the data locally at the edge and deriving new insights and trends mm-hmm. that can help in real-time decision-making. And it doesn't need any more instant and constant communication with centralized servers. So, you okay. know, that really helps. Mm-hmm. Also, in terms of scalability and flexibility, I think it's an important element as the number of devices have grown over a period of time, right, given that exponential growth has happened in IoT devices, it's important that the platforms are scalable, right? So in today's availability of cloud, it Mm. has become easier to have the scalability. So that's an important one. And last but not the least is the evolution in connectivity, because now you have this low power wide area network, you know, the LP van, which Mm -hmm. we call, Mm -hmm. which is the NBIoT and the LTM, you know, these technologies are helping even small devices to be connected to the network to contribute to the data and and help in decision-making and predicting and uh, proactive maintenance and others. So I think that that's really helpful. So the ecosystem evolution is kind of helping small and medium businesses to adopt the technology faster Mm -hmm. and come up with new innovative solutions and offerings in the market. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. And what is the next big thing, in your opinion? Is there something about at at the moment, there is so many things happening at the same time. I have the feeling that companies must have so much on their plate already. And then talking about the next big thing might just be the last drop in the bucket to getting really overwhelmed, I suppose. But do you have something that's, again, on the horizon to watch out for? That's a very good question. So if if you look at the analysis and the forecast that is being talked about, mm. uh, by 2025, there will be 42 billion devices, IoT devices that will be connected worldwide. So wow. that's a huge number of uh, IoT devices generating volumes of data, you know, that they will produce is going to be expansive, right? So there, I think the role of AI and ML is going to be crucial Mm -hmm. because with artificial intelligence and machine learning, you can really leverage the vast amount of data that is being produced by these IoT devices. It can help you to make the decision making stronger, a predictive analysis. So that is going to help in the autonomous fa- way, mm-hmm. right? You can develop autonomous systems. You can manage your devices proactively by having the pattern analysis and others. So I think the biggest breakthrough that we are looking into in the next few years are going to be, first of all, 5G integration. I think that's an important one mm-hmm. where we are talking about fully connected and intelligent industrial IoT as well, right? That's an important one, which is also going through the digital transformation, etc., right? So, but with the help of this low latency, high speed and broader coverage, it's going to create fully wireless smart factories. So that's an important element that we are talking about in the industrial IoT to have a fully wireless smart factories. Wow. And there we are kind of, I mean, as as BICs, we are working on 5G interoperability with other GSM technologies like 4G and coming up with international roaming coverage for 5G, which can help devices to roam as well mm-hmm. across boundaries, yeah. geographical boundaries. While another one is this edge AI, I think that's going to play an important role. So with the evolution in AI technology itself, it's going to play an important role in the scope of Internet of Things 
mm. breakthroughs mm. because that can help you analyze data locally can make autonomous devices right we are talking about autonomous cars mm. and there the complex decision makings can be local without any communication needed to the centralized server last but not the least which i think is an important one for industrial iot mainly is the adoption of digital twin okay what is digital twin actually so we are talking about the virtual representation of physical objects or machines in the industrial environment and this will become an integral part of iot applications because using the digital twins you can easily detect the anomalies you can make predictive maintenance there right and i think if we could do that we could avoid the incident of the alaska airlines right that happened a few days ago mm. right so that that could help in predictive maintenance right yeah. so so i think these are couple of breakthroughs in iot which we should see in function adoption in the coming days mm -hmm. are there also challenges that will be obstacles towards this future that we have to overcome yes yes so i think there are a couple of obstacles uh, that we are looking into as well today which starts from you know the device management and optimization that we have to make sure that we are using the technology to to adopt mm -hmm. itself because i was wondering we have been talking about industrial iot for 20 years global transformation digital transformation and we always say now is the time now is the time now is the time and but then reality has a different plan and companies don't keep up employees can't follow they don't get the proper training they don't have the proper skill sets yet the education system has to adapt we need a more diverse workforce we don't have enough people to do the work nonetheless there is ai coming so there's so much stuff Though I fully agree with you on that, uh, it's about the education system. Mm. It's about the teaching the skills from the very start mm -hmm. on how you can industrialize the technology. I think that's an important element that we should start from the very beginning mm -hmm. for in the schools itself. But in addition to that, it is also about keeping your employees trained and their. the organizations have to keep investing into their employees right mm. and and there is this uh, thing that i have learned once is uh, learn unlearn and relearn right mm -hmm. i think that's an important aspect that we should look into as well i suppose it's also important for the future and people have been saying this also for years Nowadays you have to have a mindset of always staying curious, not fearing the unknown, trying to experiment with new things, do things you have never done before and try and learn about them. But as we grow older, sometimes we're like I've never done it like this, I want to do it like I've always done it. It's also a mindset thing that I think students and even young well young kids have it already, but then we yeah. teach them to not be curious anymore and follow a certain yeah. pattern but i suppose we should uh, teach our students to stay curious and ask questions and be brave and yeah break things right <laughs> yeah <laughs> my daughter will be very happy listening <laughs> to this <laughs> we will take a short break stay with us we will be hearing from our guests very shortly this podcast is brought to you by afnet silica the engineers of evolution we help you bring secure intelligent and connected products to market if you want to learn more about us we have put information and links in this episode show notes and you can also connect with us on linkedin or avnet-silica.com that's a v n e t-s i l i c a.com so how is ai reshaping the traditional iot value chain that we have just discussed today's iot value chain comprises of several players mm -hmm. so if we look at the value chain you have the device manufacturers then you have the connectivity provider the iot platform provider application and service developers there system integrators there and the cloud providers right mm -hmm. so 
there is a big value chain. And if you look at the, the AI uh, and its emergence, right, it could be transformative for the entire value chain, actually. It could reshape the value chain across various stages today. So let's take a look at the device management and optimization, right? So AI can help in analysis of devices in real time. Mm -hmm. So it can prevent the failures and that can help in optimizing the life cycle for the devices to reduce their downtime and overall ensure uh, reliability for them, right? Mm -hmm. Then we talk about the decentralized processing where edge computing could help in making sure that you have the whole compute and uh, insights and trends being processed at the edge itself that can also help in making autonomous vehicles, devices, machines uh, equipped with AI capabilities because their AI plays an important role. And then in case of cybersecurity, I think that's an important piece where we have to look into identifying potential threats and vulnerabilities of the systems mm -hmm. and factories where machine learning and artificial intelligence can help you uh, to detect malware and prevent attacks, for example. But it can also help in your business intelligence and decision support, mm -hmm. right? So they can help you in actionable insights, uh, making sure that it is driving the top line for the company as well, in addition to the operational efficiency and security that we are talking about, right? So, and mm. last but not the least about the seamless connectivity and network management, right? So AI can make sure that it is optimizing the connections for the IoT devices as and when needed, right? What is the bandwidth needed? How can you make some intelligent routing there? And it can help to adapt the network conditions based on the environment and make sure that there is low latency and reliability there, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it would play an important role in reshaping a uh, lot of functions and the value chain itself. Mm -hmm. And is this also where the topic of eSIMs comes into play? That I suppose is like the, the AI hype of the IoT world. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. So eSIM, when we talk about eSIM, it is about the embedded subscriber identity module, yes. right? So it's kind of set to revolutionize the connectivity for not only businesses, but also for consumers okay. uh, as end consumers, because it will bring flexibility and efficiency in managing your subscriptions, mobile subscriptions. Unlike the traditional SIMs, uh, this technology is kind of streamlining the process and the logistical challenges, right, that are existing today for the physical SIMs. Mm -hmm. And it will open uh, new possibilities of dynamic connection in the hyper-connected world of today. So when we talk about eSIM, it looks into the, you know, the local profile and also you can look into the international roaming, right? So mm -hmm. it will seamlessly facilitate international roaming. And that can help consumers like us to connect to local network without the need of physical SIMs. Okay. And it can help reduce your roaming costs <laughs> for the businesses and also for the travelers like us, right? When we are on a business trip or on vacation, mm -hmm. for example, right? And it will also help in sustainability, Because as your logistics are kind of streamlined and you have less of e-waste, you are helping the environment as well, right? So that's another benefit of eSIM. But when we look into the IoT and machine-to-machine -machine applications, it's quite suitable because there you can deploy the profiles and make efficient connectivity management for multitude of devices, for large set of devices, without having any worry on the physical SIM profile management. So looking at the overall experience, you know, and, and the security aspect that it can offer, because there is no longer a physical SIM, mm. which could go through a tampering or, you know, a swapping um, in the consumer space. I think it offers a secure connectivity as well. So eSIM is kind of beneficial for both the 
machine to machine and IoT use cases, but also for the consumers. Mm -hmm. And of course, friendly with the environment. Sure. I'm skeptical. I have to ask a question from a consumer perspective because I still have the feeling that handover when I switch from my Wi-Fi or from, from my Wi-Fi to the mobile connection when I leave the house while being on a call, it still always breaks up or stops. Yeah. Is it in an industrial case, will it really work? Or even autonomous cars where there should not be this millisecond of, oops, lost the connection for a bit, should not be happening, right? Indeed. So that's that's a very practical question, uh, Ruth. <laughs> And with the 5G technology, your problem should be solved already <laughs> because that will help with a broader coverage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one cell can have a broader coverage as well. And the transition from one cell to another cell is much more seamless compared to in the, the previous generations of GSM. So in industrial IoT use cases, right? So that's why we are talking about the use case of 5G because 5G yeah. adoption is going to bring autonomous devices. I think there it will bring it faster compared to the earlier also edge computing so that, you know, you do not have to send your data to the server, right? Mm. You can have local processing there, which would help in making real-time decisions by the autonomous vehicle itself, right? So I think uh, newer technologies should help to, to resolve these challenges. Mm. <laughs> If you would have to put a playlist or a soundtrack together for this episode or your line of work, what would be on it? The song, the soundtrack that I would like to talk about is the Jason Mraz uh, Have It All. Oh, okay. Nice. I will put it in the show notes so that our listeners can listen to it. And uh, how does it connect to your topic? It's about you can have it all. So oh, okay. you can make sure <laughs> that you bring all the good things together and can have a very fulfilling uh, future, actually. So I like that song when when you are going through the times that you would like to motivate yourself or, or, or bring yourself up, right? That's really There cool. There are still good things in the world that, that you, you, can, you can really look at. I love that. Thank you so yeah. much, Divya. It has been great chatting with you. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> Pleasure is mine. This was Avnet Silica's We Talk IoT. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating. Talk to you soon.